Hi everyone and welcome to Monday Night Stamping where together we unlock some paper crafting fun. I'm Lillian or otherwise known as Stamper's Niche and I'm coming to you from Alberta, Canada and I love paper crafting, particularly stamping and particularly making cards although I've been known to make some 3D items as well and some mini scrapbook items and that kind of thing. Um, but I am just happy to be here with you on Monday evenings. So just before I go down to my desk, I have a question for you. What three things are always on your crafting desk? So three things that will always be found on your crafting desk. One for me is my bone folder. Um, I'd have to say my grid paper is always there as well. I always work on grid paper. It helps me keep things straight and plus I scribble on it and put ideas down. And then the third thing for me, hmm, it's hard to limit it to three, scissors or glue. Um, I think I would go with the multi-purpose adhesive. So for me, the three things that are always on my desk, although there's always a lot more, um, are the my bone folder, my grid sheet, and my adhesive. So what things are always on your desk? If you could limit it to only three, what would be the three top items, I guess? So as you're jotting that down, I'm going to go down to my desktop. And as always, I love it if you click that share button or uh, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook and um, if you're on YouTube, do remember to hit that subscribe button too so you always um, catch what I have. And if there's that little bell there, and if you click on that, you'll get notifications when I post again. All right, just a couple of little things. Paper Pumpkin, March. This month is the 10th anniversary of Paper Pumpkin. And so if you sign up, before March 10th, you actually get a free gift, an extra little something in your paper pumpkin. So if you go here and subscribe or even just book, uh, get one month, you can get that free little gift. So just a heads up about that so that you know about that. And of course, there's been lots of buzz and excitement about the new online exclusives. So these are items, online exclusives, that are only found online. Um, partly because it gives Stamping Up the ability to bring new items in quickly or if something sells out or goes out of stock they can quickly adjust it. Our catalogs get printed I would say I think I've, I've heard I believe it's they go to the printers one and a half to two years ahead of time. So if something new and exciting comes on the market in the in the in between time, they don't have a way of getting into the catalog, but they can put it on the in the online uh, uh, offerings. So that's what that's all about. So when you go there, and here's where you can find mine, and I will also do a post about that. If you come across currently unavailable, that just means they're out of stock right now, but more is coming in. If it says no longer available, that means it's not going to be restocked. So this, like so many things, if, you, if there's something you really want, it's important to order sooner rather than later because you don't know how long it's going to be there. And speaking of that, the in colors, ink refills, there is going to be a color refresh. What that means is some of the colors, well, we know that the 2021 to 23 in colors are leaving, but so are some of the others and some are coming back. So if you have ink pads or paper that you love, especially the ink pads, order them, or ink pads, I mean ink refills, order them sooner, right away in fact, because some are selling out already. So just be aware of that and act appropriately. Now last week, uh, we made this card that was had this it was a really neat fun fold with a little gift enclosure so that it was what's inside that was exciting on this card although the outside is nice. So when people leave comments either on YouTube or here on Facebook, I put your names in a draw and the name drawn this time was Nadine and she was a YouTube viewer. So um, congratulations Nadine 
and we will get that out to you. I do have your address, so we are good to go with that. So just before we start, what's happening here? Just before we start the, um, the project tonight, one of the online exclusives that I really wanted to share is this. I've posted about it. It's called the Basics 3D Embossing Folders. Yes, there's an S on it because there are three embossing folders. You can see the picture here. So there's this one that has these great dots. And so I always like to do it in white and then again in metallic. So you can see how that is. And then the reverse side, of course, and they're debossed and they look really neat. Looks like golf ball design a little bit. Then there's this one here um, and it has this nice crosshatch effect. So again, these this shows it, and then if you see on the back side, it looks like that. I, I've, I've been using these a ton already. And last but not least is this one here. It looks like little flowers or starfish or whatever, but again, it's a very basic design. And so there we have it like that, and there it is there. So if you're like me and you love to add texture to your cards, and you love embossing folders to do that, you might want to check out these. So that's the Basics 3D, and there's the number there, 161598. So there you go. So the online exclusive that I want to talk about tonight is the Irresist uh, Irresistible Blooms suite of products. So here is the stamp set. Let me do that up before I get things going. There's the dies, there's the, um, the paper, and there is also the embellishments, which I did a tip video on last week, so check that out. But tonight we're going to concentrate mainly on the paper. And I don't know about you, but when I saw this paper, I, I first of all thought it, they embossed, white embossed on designer paper. They didn't, but does that give you an idea? That was is certainly something we could do is white emboss on designer paper, right? And um, that would be easy to do and we could get our own effect going on here. So here we go right here. Here's one side and then the flip side is more generic. I'm just going to flip through because I don't think you can actually see enough of these. They are just gorgeous. So they're like that. This one here, this, these leaves, this and this can be cut out with the dies. Let me just bring those in so we could just uh, show that. So these are here. I love how these dies work. And these go, can fit that one. And then where's this little guy? Here's the little guy right here fits that. And look at how they're spaced out so that you could run them through the embossing machine and stamp and cut an emboss machine and they're not going to collide or be in each other's way. So Stamping Up has really, really planned that out beautifully. So let's put those to the side and keep going. And then we've got this one, and this is the same. We've got dies that cut out these two flowers, and we just saw that one there. Um, I've been having a little bit of fun. Look at look at how many holes I've got in that one. So uh, a super way, and you can use pretty much every speck of the paper. I love this. I don't know why, I just love that. And then look at this, and um, soft sea foam. I don't use that enough, but it's gorgeous here, and it's making me want to, to use it. This is the paper we're going to use tonight, just like that. And are, you might be saying there looks like some new colors in there. There are, and I'm going to talk about the colors in a minute. But with the color refresh happening, this is just a little sneak peek of something we might be able to expect. So those are the papers. So let me just da -da -da -da, fan a few of them out because they're not fanning very well. So the, the colors that go with it are 
Soft Sea Foam Petal Pink Flirty Flamingo Daffodil Delight. Also, two um, colors that were in colors a few years ago, and that is Pretty Peacock and Lost Lagoon. So you might say, well, I, we don't have that now. No, but do you know, you can sort of get by with Evening Evergreen and Soft Succulent. We're going to go with Soft Succulent tonight. And then, of course, just because these are the colors that go, they're not the only colors. You can bring in all sorts of colors, especially your neutrals, like your basic gray, your basic black, your white, and all of those kinds of things. So don't be locked into these colors, but they're a wonderful jumping off point. So that's the paper. We'll come back to that later. So I initially wasn't going to get this bundle, but do you know what sold me? This die right here, because I have seen so many things from other sources that have a similar die, and then this, and then I like the leaves, and then it just kind of went, and then, and then, and then. Wonderful fonts, great words, even has some of my famous splotches. So you know how I like to get acquainted, but just before I show you my get acquainted sheet, some of you are asking, will these fit in the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine? So I've got the mini plates here, and yes, they will just fit. This is that this is just fits, but it does fit. So there that answers that question and let's look at my get acquainted sheet here so here it is right here look isn't that gorgeous and this oh, and guess what these are the same size as the loose frosted dots that come with the suite so these are in different sizes and they match up with with these so you can add them here there and everywhere if you want now these are something that's not currently available but they're going to come back in stock so don't sweat it they will be back in stock but you can see that some are standalone some cut out stamped images or images from the designer paper either or either or and so this here looks great just as it is. I've seen lots of people cut out little flowers and put them on here so it's like a vine. Same with this, it's like a wreath. You can easily snip these few little spots that it's joined and have then just this, this airy little part as a standalone. You can use this, I think, with other things. Can you imagine a butterfly in here or a dragonfly or a little ladybug like that? Or what about some of your animal stamps like this? Wouldn't they just look adorable in there? Um, let me see here. I've got this here. So let's look at if he's poking. Aha, it's so cute. So remember to look at your other things as well. So that uh, a mix and match, there, there's always that fun opportunity. You, I just saw someone say it's a really nice bundle. It really is, and it's just so versatile. So that's what we're going to create with tonight, but we're going to make a really easy and quick card. And it's going to be a slim line. So let's first off bring in the paper, and we're going to use white as the base. So it's seven inches by eight and a half, and we're going to score it at three and a half. So with the seven inch, let's just bring this in so you can see. With the seven inch side at the top, we're putting it at three and a half. Three and a half, yeah, not three and a quarter, three and a half. We scored, we folded, and now our card front is actually three and a half by eight and a half. That's your goal. Why is that your goal? Because then it will fit in a regular A10 envelope that you might find at a stationery store, but it also will fit in our slimline envelopes, which are so pretty, and they would work really well with this. So, um, it's you, remember, you make your cards fit your envelope, unless you're making envelopes yourself. But uh, otherwise, 
make your card fit your envelope. That was an important lesson I learned when I was a beginner stamper. So we're going to burnish that and that is going to be our card base. Then we're going to bring in some soft succulent that is three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So, and that's going to layer right on top like that. So pretty basic, I'll turn it this way so you can see. It's just got the border all the way around. So we're going to take that off. But now when you have six by six paper, how do you make a slimline card? And if you're wanting the paper to layer on top of this. So I took my six by six paper and I cut it in half so it's th two three by six so I can get two cards from one six by six. I'm going to tuck this away for another card. We're going to use this. Now there are a couple of things you could do. You could put it at the top and stamp something at the bottom right there. That would be very simple. So let's just see here. Yeah, we could put this at the bottom add some ribbon around there and we would ha I'm going to raise my camera up a little bit it just seems to be cutting it off um, raise there we go sorry it just seem to be having trouble fitting it all in I think that should be better all right and we could do that, but what's another option? Another option would be to cut this paper. So if we did that, let's just do it. Show, I'll show you how I did my planning. I was, I was trying to think, how can I make this? Because we have lots of six by six paper and how can we make it work? Well, if I put this in the middle and brought this down, that would give the illusion. And so what I did was I measured, well, so it needs to be at least likely another two inches. So if I did two inches here, and that's how I started to play around. So let's be brave and let's cut off from here. And I forgot to write down what I was going to cut off, but let's just say, I was talking about two inches. I'm going to cut two inches off the bottom. There we go. And remember, all these measurements are in my Thursday newsletter. So there we go. Two inches off the bottom. So we have two pieces. Move this to the side. And now we can put this up here and this down here and just fill in the middle and nobody knows that there's nothing in the middle. So it's, it's we're creating um, just a little illusion that it's a big piece of paper and it isn't. And you can do this with your 12 by 12 paper because it would stretch it out, right? Um, you would could cut your paper to six by six or three by six and you'd be set to go. So let's glue this down and then do our next step. So we've got this glued down here like that. So what I've done is I've just left equal border around here, here and here. And we'll do the same down here. Like that. Whoops. And let it dry before you give it a little smudge. There we go. So now it looks like this and it's going to go on here just like that. We could stamp here, whatever, but we're going to dress it up a little, little bit. So here are your options. You tell me what you want. So we could use the white and layer it on a piece of soft succulent like that and put it in the middle like that. Or we could stamp it on the soft succulent and layer it on the white. So this was heat embossed with white. Ooh, I kind of like that. Why don't we go with this one? So where did I throw my measurements here? So my, my top layer is two by three. And then the next layer is two and a quarter by three. So we want the width to stay the same, but we want to have 
a bit of a border. And then we could always add ribbon or something, right? So you've seen me emboss lots. I'm just going to pretend that I've done it. Um, and so let's go like this. Stick, I was experimenting there. I was trying it with uh, tone on tone stamping and decided I liked it embossed in white better. So we're going edge to edge and just leaving a bit of a border at the top and bottom like that. Now we have a choice and I'm I, the reason I'm not fastening this down is I might want to wrap ribbon around. We can put it down flat or we can raise it up on dimensionals. Oh, dimensionals. I saw that right away. There was no hesitation there. So let's bring our dimensionals in. Got some black ones handy. They will work beautifully. And we'll put some like that. Just tear that off. When I was planning the card, I hadn't thought of dimensionals, but I was just thinking of that as I was talking to you here. So let's see, we'll fill that in. And look at that. It looks like you've got a nice long piece of designer paper and you've got it like that. Now, our options, we could add some ribbon, but on dimensionals, I'm not sure we need it. We could add some ribbon. I don't know, do we need the ribbon? No ribbon. Some leaves, top and bottom. Yeah, you know what, Judy? I was thinking about that too. Um, so I um, actually stamped with white, with Versamark, and then used white embossing powder and stamped it right on the reverse side of this paper. So what if we could do... Oh, I don't know about that. That, and we also have these fun leaves that are open. I wonder if they would look better. So, let's just see. What do you think? The colored leaves or the open leaves? So many choices. Or any leaves at all? The open leaves. Okay, so we can go like that or we could go that might be overkill. Let's see here. Tuck it under or on top. Well, everybody loves the open leaves. We're all in agreement on that. Excellent. Tuck it under or have it resting on top. On top would be like that. Open leaves on top, bow on the bottom. Ooh, let's see. Woohoo, there we go. Let me just try one more thing. Do I want it on top of it or tucked? Um, I think we'll tuck it just because, do you know what? It's going to be easier for me. That's the way I'm going here. I'm going to tuck that underneath. Put a little adhesive on the end and tuck it under. And I know I can overlap a little bit because there is a bit of a border yet when we put it on the card front. And the joy of not having put this adhesive right to the edge is that I can tuck things under. They're such pretty leaves. I just love them. Okay, 
There we go. And then put this down here. What does everybody think? I think so. Let's go for it. Just bring in a glue dot. I just love how stamping up everything coordinates so beautifully. Look at this. The ribbon is the perfect color. You can go like that. And now let's put it on the card front. Ooh, I like it a lot. Then a few embellishments, right? All right, so let's fasten it down and then we'll add the embellishments. But you can see how quick and easy you can make a card with a piece of three by six designer paper and just a couple of layers, right? And you've got a gorgeous, elegant, um, slimline card. So you might be saying, well, Lillian, if these, these loose frosted dots are out of stock, what can we use? Well, I have a little suggestion for you. Another color thing that works beautifully with them are the 2021 to 23. So these ones are retiring in color opal rounds. Look at how they go with that. Isn't that gorgeous? So I have a few left on this sheet. So we're going to use these ones first. Just use it up. And I think we'll go with, might as well go with some soft succulent, right? Ooh. Uh, where to put them? That didn't think that one through. Doesn't really matter. A little lower down would likely be good. And then we'll put one down here to draw our eyes this way as we go to open up the card. And there we have it, just like that. So even though the embellishments that don't that come with it aren't available, you've got other embellishments that are going to work fabulously. So there, there's my word of the day. Um, and what about the inside? Well, on the inside, you can always use any of the leaf stamps or whatever. I'm going to actually bring in a piece of my scrap grid paper. When my grid paper gets full, I cut it down so that it fits. And I'm going to stamp this off a couple of times so it's very light. And I'm going to stamp it right about where I think my words are going to go. I don't know what the words are going to be, so I'm not, I'm just aiming it there. I can stamp right over top of it if I want or whatever. I could stamp those leaf images on the envelope too and get it all finished. Um, it's all set to go. So there is a very quick, easy uh, slimline card and the colors are absolutely gorgeous. The design is gorgeous. Everything is gorgeous about it. So I've been on a little bit of a slimline card kick lately. So a couple of weeks ago, I made this one right here or one that was similar. Sorry, I just have to Give my nose a little swipe. There we go. So there's that one there. So remember to look back. I think it's two weeks ago that we did this slim line. Now, I have made, I have been on a roll with this, the Irresistible Blooms bundle, or suite, I guess you should say. Um, I took some time. I took a, a little bit of time to play and then I couldn't stop. So this is the one we made tonight. This one here, again, it's just the paper. And um, then a little bit, I used some of, I used that splotch to stamp the background there, the hello, and then I brought in some black with this one. Um, this one I showed you when I was um, showing how to, the little tips and tricks video earlier in the week. This one here was cased from a demonstrator in the Netherlands. So it's using the greens on soft sea foam, which I really need to use more. And it's again just geometric shapes and leaves. This one here is using that pretty paper and just cutting it apart and then adding that wonderful... Um, trellisy kind of thing. I don't know what to call it. This one here, the focus is really on the stamped flowers. You can see there and look at how I've used the leaves 
and I just sponged in the background. So I didn't even use the designer paper, except I think, oh, I did cut the flowers out of the designer paper. And again, um, the embellishments there. This one here I cased from a demonstrator named Susan Campfield. She did it a different direction, but it shows the embossing folders. It uses the paper we used tonight and one leaf, but the paper is so gorgeous it can stand alone, just like that. So there's another one I did. This one here, I just love this. And then I stamped on vellum and colored on the back of the vellum, but then I put a white piece underneath so that all the bits and pieces wouldn't show. So this just, I thought the green behind again, that's the designer paper from that stack. And then this one here, it looks pretty plain and simple, but you open it up and then it goes like that. So you can see both sides of the designer paper there. And then this one here, I cased it from a card by Karen Yeomans. Let me see if I can see it. Here we go. So I received this card a while back from Karen Yeomans and it's called a bay window card. And it just tucks under like that and it goes like that. So I thought, ooh, I want to give it a try. So I've used this pretty paper. Um, this is some of that textured shimmer paper that I used last week. I can't remember. And then this tucks underneath like that and you have a bay window card that looks just so special. So that being said, I, I like I said, I have been on a roll. So I decided to offer a couple of classes. So I have the Irresistible Blooms class to go, to go, pardon me, and this is where you would go to find out more and to register. Or I have the Irresistible Blooms in-person class, and this is where you go. And I'll be putting these links in the description as well. So there's the class to go, or there is the in-person class right there. So you will make at least four cards, and I will be showing you lots of the fun steps and lots of other ideas as well. So I hope that inspires you with this bundle or, and um, this, this card tonight. I hope that inspires you just with your designer paper. Can you imagine, oh, I meant to show you. Can you imagine doing that with, say, some of our other six by six paper, like the Fancy Flora? Can you imagine doing it with some of this paper? Or the, um, by the, by the Bay, I think it's called. Can you imagine? It would be absolutely gorgeous. So dust off some of that designer paper, your six by six, or cut your 12 by 12 down to three by six. All you need is a three by six piece and you are good to go. All right. I'd love it if, if you make these cards, if you would share it, um, in the comments below too, because that, inspires all the rest of us. So thanks for joining us tonight. Take care and have fun. Bye-bye.